Hello, I'm Mark Wynn, founder of Planet LA Records. Thank you for joining us today for this special program. During this very challenging time facing the AAPI communities here in America and Asians globally, as we are being targeted with discrimination and hate crimes for being who we are, including some of the most vulnerable in our communities. This must stop. And we stand in solidarity with Stop AAPI Hate and other groups who are raising awareness and promoting greater tolerance during this critical time. Today, we're honored to feature special performances and messages from artists who are lending their voices in support of this cause and who will also be joining us for a special Q&A session at the end of the program. Also, special thanks to fellow Asian American-owned businesses, including our partners at Allo Drink and our partners at Digital LA for supporting this event. Thank you for joining. Stay safe, strong, and engaged. Hi, welcome to Asian Voices, presented by Planet LA Records and Digital LA. We want to give a huge thank you and shout out to Aloe Aloe Vera Beverages for being our sponsor today. We've all gathered here to bring awareness to stopaapihate.org. If you want to make a donation during this program, please go directly to their website. Now, in our concert today, Scheduled to perform are M.D. Chow, Danny and Drew, Rocky Brown and Jason Tanzer, Streetlight Cadence, and When Planets Align, featuring Mark Nguyen of Planet LA Records. I'm Julie Tan. I'm your virtual host through today's program. I want to remind you that at the very end of this show, there will be a Q&A session with most of the artists featured here today. And if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the comment box down below, and hopefully we'll catch you in about 45 minutes or so. So now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick off today's concert with my song, Less a Patriot. Hope to see you in the Q&A. Thanks. This is my history. This is my homeland. I wasn't born with oil money or a shotgun.
Hey, what's up everyone? It's MD. I'm here in the studio with Nikhil. What's up guys? Engineer, producer extraordinary. We've been working on a, a record called Stand Next to Me. Really just about coming together, love and unity, you know, especially in these times to help really spread that message and to help uh, bring us all together. I'm going to preview the song for you and I hope you like it. It's actually going to be coming out the first week of May. Um, check it out. Thank you so much. There is a heartbreaking story right now that we should talk about. Last night, a gunman entered three different Atlanta area spas and shot and killed eight people. A majority of the victims were Asian. The surge in hate crimes against Asian Americans only getting worse, and some of the accounts are extremely violent. I think one of the incidents, the most disturbing, that really kicked off the social media outrage and the public outrage was the death of 84-year-old Visha Ratanapakti. He was the Thai man in San Francisco who had just gotten his COVID-19 vaccine. Um, a lot of times, these types of crimes, they, if there are hate crimes that are racially motivated, they go underreported, and people continue to get victimized in this way. It's just terrible. Yeah. Following some breaking news out of Queens tonight, and a woman is under arrest for a hate crime assault on a jogger that was caught on camera. The jogger, a black woman, was struck by a glass bottle while running in Woodside. Police are looking for a man they say is behind a racially motivated crime spree. Take a look, police say this guy has attacked four white people across Manhattan, seemingly at random. The sign of the times, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of volatile behavior going on due to the climate of the country, so. I'm here in LA. I'm getting ready to go into the studio for a last minute late night session. I've got this song that I just gotta get out with all of this hate that's going on in this world. Can you play with the, with the song real quick? All of us feel the same when we see our mothers crying Feel the same pain seeing our brothers laying there dying Cry the same tears, bleed the same blood while we're fighting Breathe the same air, tell me why we're still divided Stand next to me we are the ones stand next to me. You are my world of enemies. We are the ones stand next to me. All of us want the change. Let's stop the blame and the shaming. We can all be the change for the lies this hate is claiming. We cry the same tears. Be the same bloodless on the fighting We breathe the same air Let's stand together and not divide it Stand next to me We are the world Stand next to me You are my world We're not enemies We are the world Stand next to me Stand next to me
We are the world. You are my world. We are the world. Stand next to me. Hi, it's Danny and Drew, and we are honored to be a part of Planet LA Records event today. We are excited to spread love and build community, especially in these times. This is Legacy. One voice as tall as the titans, we run with the giants, we fight, fight, fight with the heart of a lion. We stand for those who are broken, for the men who died before us, for the power of the vision unspoken. And if any one of us should die before we wake, wake. I pray above for the strength that it would take. I'll be your legacy, your living legacy. Oh, plan the sea. Oh, grant the key to the next generation. I'll be your legacy, your living legacy. Oh, plan the sea. Oh, grant the key to the next generation. The pulse of the nation, feed the hungry and faithless, spread light, light, light from a high elevation. Once dark, but never forsaken, like the eyes of a baby, soft and pure as it gently awaken. If any one of us should suffer grave mistakes, stays, I pray. Above, we keep the will to create. I'll be your legacy, your living legacy. Oh, plant the seed. Oh, grant the key to the next generation. I'll be your legacy, your living legacy. Oh, plant the seed. Oh, grant the key to the next generation. Ah, 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 ah. I'll be your legacy, your living legacy. Oh, plant the seed. Oh, grant the key to the next generation. I'll be your legacy, your living legacy. We'll plant the seed. We'll grant the key to the next generation. Whoa, MD Chow and Danny and Drew. Awesome. Want to remind you that we're here to raise awareness for stopaapihate.org. And if you want to donate, please go directly to their website. Now, coming up next, we have Rocky Brown with Jason Tanzer. Streetlight Cadence, and When Planets Align. What's up, y'all? I'm Rocky Brown. I'm a dark pop artist from Las Vegas. And as a Filipino-British American who is passionate about equality and social justice, I jumped at the opportunity to join my fellow artists today to use my voice and to shed some light on what is happening in our communities right now. The video that you're about to see is my song called Soul Sister Retribution, which I wrote with my producer and co-writer, Jason Tanzer. It's about women's empowerment, and I hope you feel it. We are very honored to be here with you all today. I 
Hi everyone, I'm Ben Chai from Streetlight Cadence. We stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters who have been affected by the rise of anti-Asian violence in our communities across our country. We want to show that through all of this, we've got your back. This is a song called Learn to Love. Beautiful.
Hi, I'm Mark Nguyen, founder of Planet LA Records, an Asian-owned business. I'm very excited to be part of this uh, AAPI Asian Voices event uh, to raise awareness against you know, all the hate and discrimination that we're facing. I uh, wanted to introduce uh, the next segment, which is a project uh, I've been involved with since the founding of Planet LA Records, uh, is When Planets Align, a songwriting project with uh, Juan Liz, uh, Juan Liz Arrazo from Colombia. So this uh, song we're introducing is called Stepping Stone. It's releasing tomorrow on Spotify. And here we're showing a preview of the lyric video. So thanks for tuning in and supporting. and 
stone. Sabotage and surrender is the lasting impression. Be bred in sin without remorse or confession. Heartache and sorrow is this life's cruel lesson. Wisdom arises from acceptance and compassion. of violence against elderly Asian Americans. Pandemic was weaponized against Asian Americans. Hospital staff have been blamed for COVID-19. A 91-year-old man pushed in Oakland's Chinatown. It was a 71-year-old Asian grandmother violently shoved to the ground. Asian American hate incidents in California have risen dramatically. Lee Pakti, murder. Papo, murder. Noel Quintana, face slashed from ear to ear. Six Asian women shot dead in Georgia. An 89-year-old woman set on fire. It feels like it's open season on us. Is freedom just the word? Americans are just as American as everyone else. This is sustained through my service in the U.S. military. Now, is this patriot enough? Am I really we will be invisible no more, and we say that we are American too. Hi, thanks for joining us for Asian Voices today, presented by Planet LA Records and Digital LA. We want to thank Allo, the aloe vera beverage for being our sponsor, and we want to thank all the artists who contributed the talent to today's concert. M.D. Chow, Danny and Drew, Rocky Brown and Jason Tenser, Streetlight Cadence, and When Planets Aligned. Please stay tuned and join us for the Q&A after this show. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks.
Um, I want to welcome Danny and Drew, Andy Chow, Jason Tanzer, and Rodney Brown, Ben Chai from Streetlight, Kevin Winston. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I think the first question, actually, you know what? My first question is going to be directed towards Mark. Mark, thank you so much for you and Planet LA putting on the show today. What does it mean to you to be Asian at this moment and to bring awareness to the situation? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I've been in this country now about 45 years or so. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. But it feels like, a, especially at this moment, uh, I s still feel like a foreigner, uh, which is, uh, I think, shocking because I feel as integrated like any other American. But as a, you know, a, being perceived, I think uh, millions of people in this country still, uh, you know, have anxieties or fears about people they don't know, the cultures that they're not familiar with. And so it shows that, you know, we still have so much uh, work to do and much to learn about each other. Um, so I think, you know, what we're doing today is through art and music and our messages, helping in that awareness process that, you know, rather than focus on our differences, you know, we, we are the same. We have the same passions, dreams, and aspirations as anybody else, you know. Yep. So I think uh, it's more important than ever that we you know, try to bridge these gaps and differences. Also, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. Uh, I'm just going up here. Rocky, you have been very active in spreading the importance of STOP AAPI and for this event in particular. Uh, what are your thoughts as well, and how can others help to kind of spread this message of awareness? I think that's something that's more conversations, spread more awareness, um, racism has been around since the beginning of the fire, and it's not going to go anywhere. Jason, anything to add to that? I know this whole, I gotta mute, unmute, it's, it's too much for my adult brain. No, I was once a It's unfortunate. I was just going to speak. It is unfortunate. I mean, when we hit it against each other for somebody else's financial gains. 
for their political voting or whatever. And, and we need to recognize that because at the, at the end, in the skin, we're all just flesh and bones. Yeah, I think that's exactly that. Um, I have not experienced that in the That is so true. And, and this is and it's not my moment, but I kind of want to share that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a first generation immigrant myself. And by the time I was 13 in the early 80s, weirdly enough, I was actually physically assaulted twice by complete strangers. And it, the first time I was 10 years old standing at a stoplight and these two grown men drove by in a, in a pickup truck and threw like a cup of ice at me and told me to go back to my country. I mean, think about that. I was 10. I looked like I was about seven. And, and these grown men did that. And then in middle school, a bunch of my classmates were a bit older and I didn't know them. It was me and another Asian girl. We happened to be sitting out for me that day. You know, you got the whole slant eyes and do this and that. And then and it ended with me playing the F off and being uh, a the program. So, and that was prior to social media. So these sentiments existed before. And, and I was kind of, I, you know, for the last few decades, I've been in the home and my children grew up and like, out at schools that care that stuff now. And I was so disheartened to see it come back. But they have to see it this way and see it on the That's that's my uh, it was the first home uh, statement. Anyhow, um, moving on. Um, not moving on, but pricing the same time, but just um I'm actually MD, this is addressed to you, and I know in our conversations part of this and in your video, you mentioned that your song actually came out of your reaction to what was going on. Can you please explain the process to us and how it came about? <laughs> Yeah, so actually, I was um, I was actually in in, in at the Hilton LAX uh, because I had an early morning flight uh, to New York City. Actually, like early early in the morning, so I, I stayed in LA, and I was having a conversation actually with uh, so Sonia Norwood, who's the mom and manager for Brandy and, and Ray J, and and we were just talking about the music industry and how how you know it's tough to break like an Asian singer and things like that. You know, just from a financial standpoint, uh, the financial risk on a label is high and, and it's never worked. And so we talked about platforms and things like that and, 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 and what an art and Asian artist is doing. And and she she asked me a question, she said she said, she said, Have you have you have you addressed what's been going on uh, lately, you know, uh, with, with, with all of the Asian hate crimes and things like that? And and, and I, I, I just thought about it and, and and you know I've become a real political atheist over these last four years since I told Mark I guess when we got together. And, and, and for me, when I look at, at all this, the, the hate crimes that, 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 that are happening, you know, first with African Americans and now with Asian Americans, and of course there's so many other, uh, other attacks that we've seen, that, that when I look at it, uh, it's hard for me to, to come to grips with it because I grew up in essentially low income neighborhoods where it's a melting pot, you know, we were all poor together, you know, white, black, Hispanic, we all ran around together and, and we, sure, we, we, we bust each other's chops, but at the end of the day, it was all of a sudden. So I couldn't understand quite at all. And but what kept coming to me was was how much I love my mom, <laughs> and, and and how much how much I know all these people. They 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 care so much about about their family, you know. And I thought I thought to myself, like, what would what would happen if something like this happened to my mom, you know? Or, or if I was someone who who, who perpetrated uh, and, and did something wrong, like how, what kind of disappointment would my mom have, you know? And uh, and I thought, you know, I I, 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 I can understand that. And, and so on the phone with Sonia, I go, you know, if I was to ever address it in a song, the first line for sure would be that all of us feel the same because we, we see our mothers crying, you know. And, and 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 when that hit me, I thought I thought I thought about you know growing up, I would see the Hispanic moms that would walk. You know, in the cold to work at a fast food restaurant, and my my black friends there, their mom would get up early in the morning, go to the work at the grocery store. And my mom worked in this little storefront warehouse where she would sew these little pouches and have to cut them apart for a nickel piece because she's an immigrant. There was no one who would hire her, and eventually she became a tailor in a men's warehouse. But 
but I look at all these things, and, and, and all of us, you know, at the end of the day, just want our family to do well, you know? So, so I got off the phone with Sonia, and, and, and I, I grabbed my iPad out, and I put some quotes for us together, and, and wrote the song within, within an hour in the hotel room there. So I go, I got to get to the studio because I just feel a lot of emotion of, of just, you know, and, and, and so I called it my, my engineer guy. I said, you know, um, I, actually, at first I called it my first recording studio out in, out in Hollywood for that point before. And a guy goes, it's all booked up. Wiz Khalifa had it locked out for the whole night. You know, can't get you in it. And the room we have free doesn't have the piano, but the room that has the piano they're using, and they're not even using the piano. So... Um, so, so it's kind of, you know, so he said, I'll, I'll, I'll let the engineer know, and if they leave early, we'll get you in, you know, would you be okay with that? He, yeah, I don't care. 2 a.m., I'll go in. So I called my engineer guy, and I, and I said, I said, hey, I need a studio with a piano, like, right now, like, to go in and, and, and do some work. And he goes, dude, I'm at, I'm at Stag Street, which is the eyes. My session's done at 11, they're wide open, um, and, and then, so, so I booked it for you from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., and I called up as many keyboardists that I knew, pianists. I played a piano, but I don't play as well. And one of the guys was part of my backing band who also played on a little Wayne band and things like that. And, and he's got wife and kids, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, last minute, can you make it? He said, let me talk to your wife. I'll call you right back. He called me back. So we meet in the studio at 11, and from 11 to 3 a.m., we put together the song. So you do the I mean, you uh, were just anxious to get the message out, right? Like, you wanted to go. Yeah, I, I knew I knew that something was happening. Something, you know, sometimes. And I just knew so we were. I was cat and Michael Jackson used to say, you know, we're just conduits of ideas, and it's like we don't. And he was so afraid that if he didn't put a song down when it came to him, that Prince was going to get it, you know. And uh, so I think we're just we're just and so and so I, I felt the moment. That's why I started recording because I knew something was coming down the pipe, and and started documenting the the, the process almost immediately. And we got in there, and it was just it was just magical. Um, and then and then we only it only took one other session where we brought all the musicians in. We saw in that video within four hours, we we finished the whole song with all the musicians. I mean, it was, really came together. We have Madonna's guitarist on there. The guitar player was, is is Monty Pittman on there. It just it felt like it was it, the, the, it was a time you know to, to share to share the message. And and to me, to me, you know, the one thing that we have I think in common with all that's been happening is that I think we just don't want our family harmed or hurt, you know, and sometimes when, when it doesn't, when your family doesn't get hit, you can tend to be dismissive, dismissive of it. You go say, well, that doesn't really happen. It is, but, but when your family gets hit, your family gets hurt and you can visualize your family in that predicament, then also it becomes really real to you, you know, and, and I see why, you know, when, when all things happen with, with African-American community, they could see their sons, their fathers, their mothers suffering what was happening, even though it might not have happened to their family. And so when it happened to the Asian American community, I looked at it and I go, I could see that happening to my mother. It hasn't happened to my mother, but I can see that happening to my family. And and, it, and then it hit home, right? Uh, um, um, I haven't experienced, experienced as much of it myself because I've, I've been pretty much in a melting pot most of my life. But but when you start seeing your family, like you envision, envision it happening to your family, I think that's when it's home. And that, that's why the song itself, it's really rooted around the fact that the one thing we have in common is that we all care about our family. We all want peace and prosperity for our family. How we go about that, you know, I think is, is sort of the problem right now, right? Um, and, and, and we've got to address that. Remind us, um, when, when will the song be released and available on the platform? Um, it's gonna, uh, the release date is May 7th, uh, May 7th, so Friday, May 7th is, is the release date. I put up a website uh, called stand, standnexttome.org. I'm really gonna big, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna try to go for like a, a told Mark, <laughs> I'm gonna go for a televised rally in, uh, in in New York City and I'm really leveraging every connection I have business-wise uh, and, and everything to see what I can do, you know, with it in terms of getting the message out there. Awesome. Uh, you know, as, as an anthem, so, yeah. Well, it's definitely anthemic. Could you do us the favor of going ahead and putting those links into the Facebook? Sorry, you were cutting out a little bit, Julie? Julie. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just saying, since we're talking about releases, can, can Mark go ahead and remind us uh, when his song is out? Or it's, it's mentioned as coming out tomorrow. 
Um, sure, yeah. So uh, we have uh, our new song, The Stepping Stone, which you saw the lyric video, is coming out tomorrow on Spotify and all digital platforms. So it's part of uh, our new album that myself and my longtime co-writer, Juan Lizarrazo, who's based in Bogota, uh, have worked on. So it's our fourth project in the last about 10 years. Yeah, thanks. And Mark, do us a favor and go ahead and put those links um, in the chat as well on Facebook, on the Facebook stream, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm going to go ahead over to Danny and Drew, who have been waiting so patiently since the beginning of our, our meetup about an hour or so ago before the cast even started. What is this? So thank you for your participation today. And what does this event mean to you? And what can we do as the next generation? Well, I'm the last generation. I think the people asking are the next generation. <laughs> during these current events in the Asian community? Like, what would you suggest? Like, what are some of the action items that we can under... Yeah, thank you so much for having us. So we're, we're so honored to be here and um, to have these conversations with um, before that happens to the event. Um, talking to no one just to their own stories. For us, we were talking about how, um, you know, it's really hard to watch the news right now, but it's also important to be informed. And um, I think one thing that's been important for us, um, especially in the census, and black, so I've been feeling everything. And um, I know I've said you know, uh, also going through it too, um, and supporting each other. But I think the main thing is to remember that we are all human, we are all, you know, a collective family. So it's really important to share those stories. So, you know, those that where my grandmother comes from, it's not actually the future that all the same story, but we have to make it personal that and start treating each other and understanding that so this is something mom right now and future. And when it comes that human, forget about race. We really do. And I think we of miscarriages uh, and also very slow miscarriages. You know, it comes down to humanity. And that's what it is. It's about somebody you want to protect them and you want to And that's really where we're coming from and we want to spread that message to our people. That's amazing. And thank you both again for joining us today. And, and if you don't mind, if you have any projects coming up and so forth, if you don't mind just putting them in the chat in the comments as well so we can follow you. And I, and I encourage anybody out there who's watching to follow all these artists on, on their social platforms. I'm going to go ahead and kick it to Ben from Streetlight Cadence. You, you, you guys had, the, uh, had us all crying from some of the comments. It, it got everybody just bawling to learn to love because I, I think so much of the lyrics too wasn't just you know, us all learn to love each other, but it's like having family that hurt each other as well. And and I, knowing my mom voted for Trump in 2016 still hurts me. I know she regrets it now, but it's that kind of thing where it was a tough one to get over. I, I literally had the kids pack in their bags at Christmas saying, we're out of here because she did not understand what I was getting at. But she gets it now, the same. So explain to us what brought about that song. And boy, that was an emotional one. Sure. Uh, so the song itself was actually written because our uh, violinist, John, uh, had a, a little bit of a fight with his sister. Um, and it was a bad fight, and it happened while we were in Japan. Uh, because And we, we happened to be playing in Japan, and his sister lives in Japan. We always meet up. Um, and, and something happened. And, um, and so for a, a few years, actually, after that, um, they stopped talking to one another because of kind of the seriousness of the situation. It was really awkward. Um so that, that's where that song initially stems from. Um, it's kind of the, the family dynamic uh, between him and his sister. Um, but then the idea of it kind of expands to beyond that, right? Ironically, John and I are actually also related. I mean, he's like blonde hair, blonde, but he's married to my sister. Uh, so we're, we're brothers-in-law, uh, and we're also, you know, bandmates. 
Um, and you can imagine the sort of tension that happens uh, in, in our kind of dichotomy. Um, but it works out well. And so uh, the song itself was, is, is generally just about um, kind of the, what, you know, what, what happens if we all just learn to love a little, learn to forgive a little. Um, we're, we're all going to fight. We're all human, right? And uh, to, just to be able to, instead of acting out of fear, what would happen if we, if we learn to love? And so... Uh, you know, from from the little relationships to the kind of the big idea of what's going on now, uh, that's what the song is about. That's fantastic. We needed a weepy today. Um, <laughs> Kevin, are you still there? I've, I've lost you. I, I'm afraid that you put up the pick because you got got tired of us. Hi, Kevin from Digital LA. Thanks for presenting us today and being one of our sponsors. Could you explain a little bit what Digital LA is? Hey everyone, uh, thank you for having some piano calls. Thank you, uh, thank you so much to our to artists for performing, that was amazing. Uh, I'm Kevin Winston, founder of Digital LA. We've been organizing uh, entertainment tech events in the LA area uh, for more than a decade, often partnering with Planet LA Records for whatever Mark says let's do, so we're more than happy to help uh, promote this event and help promote uh, all of your voices and amazing songs. Uh, to uh, to our entertainment tech influencer Hollywood uh, audience, so happy to help and support. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for your support today, um, Mark. Any any last words or no, anybody um, who has you know if you have personal testimonials, if you just have you know something you want to say to our audience out there right now before we sign off today? I, I certainly want to thank everybody for joining us today for this important uh, cause, and also just again, it's it's. Mark had said something that, and that stuck with me earlier before before the broadcast started. Was he was talking to someone who said Asian hate doesn't exist because they still eat Chinese food, and and I think that goes to like Rocky was saying, is that people don't get it, or what I think what Jason said too was that people don't get it. They don't realize, you know, how ingrained the the, the discrimination or the sentiments are. It's like, well, if I drive a Japanese car, then it's okay. And, and I think that's the same thing that happened with Black Lives Matter. Well, I have a black friend, you know, I can't, it doesn't mean that I hate, but, but some of these ideas are ingrained in people. And then how do we raise awareness? And and not so much, I, I know growing up in the suburbs where there literally were four African-Americans in my high school class of like 450 kids, um, you know, it, it, I tried to fit in more. I, I tried to be more American. I tried to be less Asian and so forth. But at the end of the day, as the kid on the street corner, I'm still the one they're going to throw shit at. So it's to reclaim our identities. But how do we do so without being too offensive? And as Asians, and the reason why this program today was called Asian Voices is because we often try to keep our voices down. We don't want to be the bullies, right? But so, Mark, moving forward, what do we do and how can we accomplish awareness? Yeah, you know, I think uh, what we're doing is is definitely helping the cause of, for people tuning in today and for people watching afterwards. And I think we also could take some uh, a little time to answer maybe some of the questions our audience that has been tuning in. So thank you, uh, you know, all the different audience members and fans of the artists, Amy, Christian, Andres, and others that I've seen here. So we can feel free to ask a few questions to uh, our group here today, and as we get ready for that, yeah, you know, I know uh, some of you here are biracial. Uh, Kevin, yourself, uh, Rocky, uh, Danny, and you kind of alluded that, uh, you know, being kind of caught in between, or how do people perceive you? You know, Kevin, how, how does that feel, you know, growing up? <laughs> you know, do you try to be more Asian, less Asian, more white, or more, you know, like, how do you then fit? Because that's how people perceive us, is what they see on the surface. So how did you try to react? Or maybe, Kevin, you can start. Sure. For me personally, I just I just, I just am me. <laughs> uh, and I, I do things that, that I, that I, that I want to do. And uh, uh, in college, uh, the Asian group asked me to do stuff with them. Uh, and I was already doing... Uh, stuff with student government for everybody, and so uh, so I, I basically you know decided that I would be involved in student government overall and uh, have agents who are doing who are focusing on the Asian issues do that. But now I'm realizing that uh, you know over the past <laughs> several several 
several weeks uh, that that's not enough and that uh, everyone, I think, needs to be doing things uh, specifically for uh, supporting and looking up Asian voices and doing whatever they're doing and, you know, it may seem if they're doing something amazing. So, um, so yeah, uh, with Digital A, uh, we have traditionally been di- doing events uh, for everyone. Uh, and around February, we always have a, a panel featuring black um, startups and entertainment and tech folks. We actually haven't done one focusing on Asian startups and entertainment and, and tech folks. So uh, since May is AAPI Heritage Month, uh, and uh, I would want to start organizing events around that. Uh, so I'll do a panel for startups and entertainment and uh, other folks uh, in May. So that's kind of a, a, an action step. Uh, because, you know, being silent or ignoring the fact that May is the API Heritage Month, which a lot of people haven't really focused on, didn't get a lot of attention, certainly not as much as uh, some of the other months, uh, actually doing something that month is one of my action steps. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing. And I encourage other people to, uh, to do things as well. Uh, we can all do something um, instead of being silent and just letting, you know, things happen and assume someone else will do it. Uh, someone else will take care of that. I'm already doing my thing. I think it's imperative that everyone, whether you're Asian, half Asian, no Asian, <laughs> are breathing a human being, uh, everyone can do something to help support. That's fantastic. So those of you out there watching, please follow Digital LA on your social platforms as well to see the events that are all coming. Thank you. Now, now, maybe Rocky and Danny, do you have any more? I know, Danny, you talked a little bit about it earlier, or Rocky. Yeah, I would like to say, um, I think it's important to have, um, hopefully you guys can be okay, lean a little closer. Um, I do think that representation is really important. So where it is safe to show up, um, whether it's online or, you know, where you can make your voice heard, even, you know, in writing for those that are, you know, our creative writers out there, um, use your voice. Um, I think it's really important to just even being present and stepping forward and, you know, just claiming your culture naturally. I mean, us existing here in this space um, is representation and that is activism as well. Yeah, I think uh, just being part of the conversation you know, if, if people don't know where to begin, just jumping in on the conversation. Um, as I was going through uh, AAPI.org's website, there are amazing links on there um, on what to do when you find yourself in a position of uh, being a victim of a hate crime or witnessing a hate crime and, um, and how to intervene and kind of just be, you know, aware of the situation and, and how to handle that. Um, I think it's important for any person of color or just anyone really to to read up on all this and and just do your homework and um, and educate yourself on on like how to deal with those kind of situations because most people would kind of lock up and freeze. I, I mean, I don't know what I would do if you know. Uh, if I was actually physically or, or verbally harassed or assaulted. Um, but just to kind of be aware, you know, it's important just for your safety and to speak up for, for um, you know, people of color and for Asian Americans. And, you know, it's just, you have to do your part. I think everyone needs to get involved and um, take care of each other. I just want to underscore what everyone's saying as far as getting involved. Whatever you do, professionally or as a hobby or whatever, whatever you do, you can use and lend your voice to help for uh, for lifting up these voices and helping other people out. For example, as other people said, if you're a writer, uh, write your story, write an op-ed. I know that a lot of uh, journalists and, and news publications are looking for Asian writers. Unfortunately, they don't happen to have that many or any on staff, so they are looking for uh, people to help represent their voice. So if you're a writer, maybe contact your local newspaper online and say you can write an op-ed for your experience and give your insight because that probably is missing in their news. Um, 
if you have, uh, if you're a musician, as many are, uh, perform and, and join events such as these to help uh, get your voices out. If you're a, a startup person, think of what you can do uh, to help uh, address some of these issues. Every, whatever you do, there's probably something you can do to help out with this cause of just think about it. And again, I organize panels uh, featuring entertainment and tech, and I'm going to organize some more panels featuring API. So again, whatever you can do, it doesn't have to be marching in the streets. It doesn't have to be, you know, writing your writing politicians every day, which some people will do, and that's totally fine. But whatever your whatever is with your realm of what you do, uh, do something. Even just doing a simple Facebook post or sharing this video uh, is helpful. Just so join the support. No No, no, that's exactly, that's because we need to act in whatever way we can. And a lot of it is simple. It's, you know, it's communicating and sharing things uh, to show, you know, our perspective and to learn from other perspectives. So, no, definitely. Uh, we cut off for a minute, but it looks like we're back live. Uh, do we have questions from the audience or, uh, or if anyone else wants to comment? while we wait for questions. Some people are saying like, does it matter if I do a Facebook post or if I post an Instagram post? Uh, like, is, is that just like social media activism and where's the actual action? Personally, I think that it's a start. It just shows that you're interested and you support. Uh, that can be a start and hopefully you can do other things uh, as well. Um, that's my personal. Okay, so, so, so yes, if you just want to comment on that, yeah, yeah. I, I think that the idea that people try to prevent people from acting up or speaking out uh, is a sign of the person that is uncomfortable with the conversation, but the person speaking, because I, I constantly, I shouldn't say constantly, I post a handful of times a month and I spend quite a bit of time writing about it and, and quite a bit of time researching it because I'm looking to not only uh, be an ally, but, but bring dialogue to light. And what I find is, is that the people that look to marginalize stuff, I won't name politicians yesterday that were talking about the MLB, but I'm sure you guys have all seen it. Um, when you're trying to prevent people from being part of the conversation, you are clearly stating you disagree with their viewpoint, and more so you're, st you're stating that you're uncomfortable, that you're not wanting people to raise awareness to it, which is the antithesis of what we're trying to do. We need people talking and we need people raising their voices and we need people participating, especially if they don't, but if they're not um, a subject. And I don't mean to say subject in a derogatory way. I'd, I'd like to try to be an ally. I'd like to try to raise awareness to that, regardless of the fact that I may not look or be what the subject is about. And I think that's how we do it is by talking about it and by raising awareness. You know, one of the things that um, that that I, I know we're trying to do, or I'm trying to do with with stand next to me and and on the site is is you know it's always thinking about like the younger generation, like that's the one that's really coming up. And when I was um, when I was I, w I, I was part of a, a gang that comprised mostly of African American youth, and, and and when I was just coming out of that, I was my sophomore year, my assistant principal um, was like, hey, you know, and I was the lost kids, probably still still lost now as an adult, but um, um, he, he put me into this uh, speech writing contest for MLK, uh, Martin Luther King speech writing contest. And, 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 uh, and through that entire experience of going through with other students writing this, this speech, I ended up getting second place in, in my group in a DC area. Um, um, but it impacted the way that I thought. It made me think about, you know, um, what it means to, to, to have unity, what it means to walk together, you know, because it was a high, uh, I have a dream contest. And so what we're trying to do is, 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 um, is actually do an essay contest, you know, for middle schooler and high schooler, um, so that, so that we can actually get the conversation going with them. And, and there's some type of, 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 of prize and type of value that they pursue. And in that they, they gain some kind of experience you know between the students so that's something that 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 i'm working on in terms of trying to get the conversation but i think if we can look at each of our spheres and circle of influence and go you know how can we keep creatively even also reaching down to the younger generation because that's really where where it has to go you know because if they don't get it if, if they don't start to understand these things they're going to be the future adults that essentially is going to be throwing models at someone you know and 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 it's sort of like you know what can we do to, to reach downward you know as musicians for example like 
I'm almost curious, you know, what if, what if some group got together and said, let's do a songwriting contest for, for kids, you know, across the country that, that, uh, that, that, you know, are into music. Can they create something that speaks to unity and, and speaks to, to equality and justice? You know, what would happen if, if something like that would take place? What would happen if, if, if the Recording Academy actually put something like that together, you know, the Grammys and, and as part of their program, how would that impact across the entire country? You know, you have a prize. You, okay, the kid that wins, they get to go to the next year's Grammy and meet the celebrities. What can we do to get the younger generation to have the conversation, right? That's sort of where my head is at with, with it. You know, it'd be great if someone has a connection to the Recording Academy and go, hey, let's do this, guys, and, and it actually gets done, right? Um, it would be incredible. Well, um, yeah, no, great idea, uh, MD. I'm, I'm actually a Recording Academy voting member, so let's let's put this before them. <laughs> I'm almost happy to yeah, reach Mark, out. Yeah, Mark, get it done. Yeah, all right, action item one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like the chat says our audio is better, so people are hearing us, and if folks, there are a number of comments happening in there. Uh, if there are more questions, we can take a few more minutes on that. Uh, but yeah, other action items, you know, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a Asian History Month is coming up. It's not saying that that's the only month we should pay attention to this, you know, just like, you know, Black History Month in February. Uh, but it's this dialogue that we need to have because it could be uncomfortable for a number of us to have this dialogue, to face people within our friends and family who we're like, wow, they're racist, <laughs> but maybe it's not racist. It's, it's the ignorance or discomfort to kind of address some of these issues. I think that's what we, we have to get at. For example, the lack of awareness, you know, Mark, yeah. it's like because we were talking before, and and you know, from my personal experience, having grown up in the suburbs, it's like I didn't want to make myself small. And there was a time in my life where if someone said to me, "Oh, they'll say something." That's racist, and then look at me and go, "Oh, we, you know, we, we just think of you as white," and I took that as a compliment. And I think it's Asian sometimes because we shirk within our own skin. It's like, yeah, I don't want to be, you know, too noticeable. And I think it's time to reclaim our voice and not to put it in people's faces, but just to, just to, you know, own our identities, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's your next song, Julie. Own your identity. Own our identity, <laughs> or it could be a collaborative project as part of. You know, that, that sounds. Good. That actually sounds right. Um, actually, going back to the chat, um, I, I know this was a comment, and it actually goes back to the point that Danny was making, um, and it's from a friend of mine who actually I, I I know she has a biracial son, and she says, you know, a lot of the awareness needs to be done by us engaging other people of color and working together. So, and it goes back to the thing that Rocky pointed out that that we're not all hating on each other, like we're not fighting for the scraps, right? Like we we. Combined, we actually do have more power. It's kind of like that Georgia voting thing. It's like if everybody got together and vote, we can do this. And if we all got together and spoke our voices, we can change the tide. What do y'all think about that? And how do we go? Are going to chime in? Let's chime in. Yeah, anyone want to jump in on that? How can we change the time? That one person can get shit done. Uh, so if we all came together, imagine what we could do, you know, um, as I was researching and, and just uh, studying about um, Asian hate and just racism in general. You know, I, I came across Amanda Nguyen that uh, just has done an incredible amount of work for social justice and, and for, um, for women and for, you know, victims of sexual assault and everything. And, and she, she has created such a huge... Um, movement and made a, a huge impact, you know, getting getting legis legislation and getting laws um, into place and, and working, you know, with um, senators and, and people in politics, you know, to, to actually make a difference. So um, 
yeah, maybe, maybe it could be, you know, as simple as us getting um, connected with some of these organizations that do something and, and volunteer or, um, yeah, I, I kind of don't know where to begin because it, it seems so daunting, but doing events like this, you know, it's a really good start, you know talk talk to people like what Danny said, you know, humanizing our experiences and making our um, our stories known and telling your story and, and making it more intimate so that people understand that, you know, we're all the same. Yeah, as for the AAPI um, experience, I feel that I should just listen. Um, but I will add as I said before, that I think that we need to, I, I need to spend more time inspiring people that are not API to get involved because we have a thing in this country, and I, I'm sure it's everywhere, but I have a better understanding of our country, where we tend to tune out things that don't involve us. And I think that I, I just can't emphasize that enough. That's one of the main things I see if you poll 10 people and you say, you know, what do you think about veganism, which is something I am, and nine people aren't vegan, they're out. They're automatically discontinued. And that, in a nutshell, is the basis of intolerance in our country, in my opinion, is people finding no interest in participating in something that doesn't involve them. I'm not calling us selfish. I'm not that cynical. But I am charging people's disinterest in participating in things that don't involve them. I'm charging. Yeah, no, great point, Jason yeah. and, and Rocky, because it's, you know, it's, we may not be cynical and say people just don't care and they're apathetic, but, but maybe it's they lack this empathy, which you can learn to be more empathetic well, through we're hyper, awareness and education. We're hyper, we're hyper hit with everything, right? Everything is on a timeline. Everything's got a countdown. Everything is super serious. That, that's the social experience. That's the news experience. And politicians tend to want to perpetuate tuning people out because that's how they win elections. And we're not tuning ourselves out and we're not not paying attention. We have to stay engaged and we have to stay focused on what matters, which is, you know, the experience of everyone having uh, the same starting line, the same value systems, the same abilities. That's what we're focused on. Oh, no, very well said. Um, others, uh, you know, I know, Kevin, you shared that you're going to do some more events uh, surrounding a, uh, the API community in April, but do you think that also helps to move the needle just so people see, you know, there are Asian startups and, you know, other, um, you know, writers and creatives in the space, like we're seeing with, like Chloe Zhao, and she's having a big moment, you know, as director of Nomadland, just like Parasite and K-pop, you know, but do you think culturally that's helping to move the needle as people consume more Asian originated content? Yes, I definitely think that uh, it's it's quite, I think, lucky, as Tommy has it, that both Chloe Zhao, the director of Nomadland, is up for uh, an Oscar, as well as Lee Isaac Chung, who is a Yale who wrote and directed um, Minari, uh, describing the Korean-American experience uh, that he had growing up uh, in the Southeast. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely... A, uh, I think a lucky happenstance that these two films happen to come out, and and the, uh, the creators are up for for um, for, for Oscar. And, and so I think that's a start. Um, I think that we all need to be doing what we can within our realms, like I said before, to do something around that. So I know that in February during Black History Month, uh, there are a lot of panels uh, featuring you know, black filmmakers. Um, there are. You know, there are, there are other events. I'm just, you know, again, I'm for everyone to think about what what is happening in May, which is the AFA Heritage Month. Does anyone have anything on the calendar right now uh, for that? And if not, I think that's a problem. So let's create that calendar. We have three weeks. 
Uh, I'm gonna share some 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 events I, I mentioned. Uh, like we need to be doing what we can, whether we are a guy ourselves, half or allies, uh, etc., to be doing something to help raise the needle. Uh, just like during uh, last June and during Black History Month, uh, people who were not uh, black were like, "Well, what can I do?" Um, and the answer was not just sit there and, and quietly support. You have to actively support. You have to actively be anti-racist. The same applies here. You can't just sit like, oh, I'll, I'll watch the panel or whatever. Uh, like, what can you actively be doing to help you know, spread the word? Whether it's be sharing something, lifting up the voices of a, of a, of a AAPI uh, friend or peer or coworker, what can you be doing to actively support uh, on an individual level and on your organization level? So I think we could do another thing like this, you know, featuring API voices in May, uh, for example. Um, that's, a, that's another action that we can do. Yeah, All right, oh, cool. awesome. I was going to say, thanks for suggesting that, Kevin, because one of the comments we got was, can we do this once a month? So, Mark, Kevin, can we do this once a month and beyond API month of May? Let's just do it once a month. Is that possible? Sounds good to me. Yo, um... Uh, Danny and Drew, uh, any comments on that? You know, uh, in terms of what you're doing, your for your music or your activities, because you're active in many ways, of sharing your music and through film, TV, and other channels. Uh, yeah, I mean, just being you know, a part of this event is, is very special for us. Um, you know, we we want to be using our talents in this platform to to just give awareness of like what other people were saying earlier, the things that they may not be aware of, you know, they may not want to listen to it because it may not involve them. But if someone that they know are a part of it and they're willing to watch and participate, that will help way, that will help with their awareness and then they'll be able to take action of, for themselves or at least it's at least on their radar. So if it doesn't involve them, but a family member is, is watching or a family member is watching an event that someone's a part of because they love their music, that that raises that raises awareness and just puts their um, their conscious and their minds on it. So that way, if they were to see something in the future, they can take action themselves. So just being on a platform like this is great. Um, to be making music and being creative is already a blessing in itself, and to use that to let that be our voice and to uh, continue kind of pushing the the movement of love and connection with people because that's that's really what we're this scene right now, and I think that's what we need more of in this world. Yeah, and just to add on to that too, just continuing um, the conversation of celebrating the wins, you know, celebrating when each other are doing well and lifting that up. And it, maybe it's not something that we are, um, you know, a project that we're doing, but we can, you know, help elevate your projects or different platforms and just continuing to raise those voices um, is, is important too, because as much as I talk about, you know, we're all human and we're all the, you know, of the same, made of the same, um, it's also important to recognize that there are so many cultural differences among, you know, each, each, you know, Chinese American, Korean American, um, and then, being from China, you know, there's differences there too regionally that all of those things we can actually share and understand and learn. And the more, once we get back to traveling, the more that we can travel and interact with people, the more um, we break down those barriers, expose those beautiful differences, and then, you know, connect again and just continue to build that, that humanity and that love. So we are... We, we often write love songs and songs about, um, you know, we get in our feelings and whatnot. So we hope that our music too can contribute to that conversation. Great, fantastic. Um, you know, it looks like we have a question from our audience. Could we clarify where people can help donate? What organizations should we uh, be aware of and support? So stopapi.org is one. Uh, are there other organizations uh, that this group is familiar with? 
I think we can put more in the chat in, in the coming days because um, I, I do also want to mention, want to thank the crew working behind the scenes at Planet LA Records who went so kind to keep feeding us all these cues and who did all the prep and the lead up to this. And I'm sure between all their brilliant minds, they'll um, provide a list of all the organizations that we can list in the, in the coming hours, even later today. Sure. So any last words, Mark? I think I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We'll be saving it for next month since we're going to be doing it again pretty soon, right, Kevin? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Yo, uh, yeah, any last thoughts from folks? So maybe just do a quick sort of uh, wrap up and then we'll wrap up the, the, the event today. Um, yeah, Ben? Yeah, um, thanks everyone for joining in. I think the most important part Maybe as artists, one of the most important things we can do um, in addition to events like this is, you know, during our shows, before and after, hang out with your fans, right? Like, get, let them get to know you, um, especially if you're like me and you're a, an Asian banjo player. <laughs> Which, there aren't that many of those, right? Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, the, the individual relationship, the individual connection, one at a time is what ultimately brings the biggest change, so... Great. Yeah, well said. Oh, Rocky and Jason? Um, I, I don't really have anything else to add. I'm just honored to be here with you all and, and to celebrate each other and, um, you know, spread the word. And and this was necessary, you know, just to, just to get my mind wrapped around everything that's going on. And, you know, because of this event, I... I deep dived into these issues and, and these articles and just feeling it all. It's all very emotional. And, um, you know, I just like MD, you know, I, I imagine what it would be like for my mom and my family, you know, who have experienced, um, hate in some way. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's all very emotional, but I'm happy, you know, that we've had this, experience together through music yeah we have to continue the conversations uh comfortable and uncomfortable and we have to push um tolerance forward we have to have the same experience what we do with the experience is what makes this place special but we have to start from the same experience we have to have the same rights we have to have the same um abilities yeah that's well, basic. Well, That's the starting point is to yeah. be on an equal playing field, you know, to um, that we all have the same basic rights no. and respect. Well said. Um, MD? Um, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I, I think for me, it's, it's just, um, uh, like Kevin said, you know, um, just doing more. And, and I, I can relate to you, Kevin, because like I, in growing up, I was kind of the same way. Like, you know, I know I'm Asian, but I'm American, you know, I'm human. So, so I never really focused in necessarily on, on the Asian community. Cause I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm an everybody person, you know, uh, even as a kid, I, I was never part of any clique. I was a loner, but I was friends with everyone, you know, that type of thing. And, uh, but, but I think you're right in that, in that we do in some way, make sure that we're represented, you know, and focus on the fact that, that our, our, our heritage is represented in, in, in more significant ways. So, so for me, it's basically, you know, uh, I used to always say to, say, say to people, um, the key to success is phone calls and emails. Right. And so, um, so for me, what I'm going to do is, is make phone calls and send emails and go, Hey, this is what I'm up to. You know, what are you up to? You know, what can we do together? That type of thing. And then, and then kind of see where it goes from there. I think that, that's all any of us can do is reach out to our circles and go, okay, this is this what's going on with me. You know, can we do anything together? You know, um, and hopefully that moves the ball forward somewhat. No. Thanks. Thanks for that. Danny and Drew, anything else? I, I, I love what everyone has said on the call, and I really... Um, share that sentiment. Uh, I think we both do. But I, I want to also make sure that people are not um, post as much as you can that, you know, factual information. And then also, as many times as you're posting, make sure that you're actually reaching out to 
people in those communities that you're posting about and have a real conversation with them and um, ask them for a safe space to ask dumb questions if you feel like you're not really sure where to start. Because I think sometimes it's less of ignorance or not being tolerant, but it's just about um, feeling like, oh, if I ask that, like, do I then seem like I'm coming across, you know, a certain way? So create those safe spaces for people is really important. And I was also thinking too, um, because we're always trying to learn new languages, there's a lot of culture that's embedded in the way that Chinese characters are written or different languages are created. So also do something fun, like learn a new language, and you might find that you learn about the culture and you're able to then, you know, um, understand it in a different way, which is more innate too. Wow. Yeah, well said. So don't just have hand express. <laughs> Actually, try to learn what that means. Yeah, you know, uh, Kevin. Uh, yeah, just again, uh, echo some of the things that people said. Just do something. Um, it's not enough to passively support rah rah. I support the. I support you. We actually need to see it. Whether it's a post, uh, whether it's whatever you do, just do something in support for the API community. Uh, whether you are API and have been super active all along, uh, whether you're just realizing that you're API or have and, and, and should have been doing something or can do something now to lend your voice, uh, or if you're not a, a API but just want to show your support as an ally, uh, we need everyone's help to move the needle um, as and make a difference. Um, so just, again, uh, do whatever you can. It can even start as simply as, again, sharing this video to help promote this uh, video amongst your friends on, on Facebook. Uh, follow the uh, the artists here, both uh, Asian and allies, uh, because that shows support as well. Just follow them on Instagram. It's as simple as that. Um, there's a lot of simple things you can do. And if you want to do the more difficult things, like you know, write a letter or start a campaign, you can do that too. But just do something, because again, sitting and just expecting other people to do something, uh, or just silently having support without, without showing it, uh, it's not enough. We actually have to be active. Yeah, no, exactly. Just being passive and is almost like being complicit. It's not enough because then people are going to be affected by it or harmed by it, discriminated. So it's a good point, Kevin. There was a comment about handles, accounts, who to follow. Uh, so this video is saved right after the stream, and then we're uploading it to YouTube. So the handles are on the videos, but we can also do a post afterwards to you know identify all the artists and partners involved so you can follow and support them that way. And speaking of, uh, we want to thank uh, Allo, an Asian-owned business based in San Francisco. They've supported our events for almost as long as Planet LA has been around. They've supported music events that we've done, artists, uh, as well as this underwriting, the technical production of this event. So we really appreciate that. And it's a healthy product. <laughs> so if you haven't at aloe vera, it's very popular in Asian culture. For some Americans, they're like, aloe vera, what's that? But give it a try. It's, it's healthy for you. <laughs> so um, but that's all I had uh, uh, on my part. And Julie, maybe you could uh, sort of close with any last thoughts. Yeah, I, I just want to say I'm in awe of all of you and your talents. And I'm grateful to be able to join you as an artist today and as the host. Um, I do want to thank Planet LA and the crew behind uh, Planet LA as well. So, so uh, specifically, actually, I want to call out Christy and Eric who helped us uh, do this chat put this, and put a lot of assets together. And then I want to thank our editors, Emily and Dave, who were behind the scenes and got us all up and running as well. Um, so again, I look forward to seeing everybody in May, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and again, thank you to Allo and thank you to Mark. A wave of violence against elderly Asian Americans. Pandemic was weaponized against Asian Americans. Hospital staff have been blamed for COVID-19. A 91-year-old man pushed in Oakland's Chinatown. It was a 71-year-old Asian grandmother violently shoved to the ground. Asian American hate incidents in California have risen dramatically. Vicha Ratana Pakti, murder. Papo, murder. Noel Quintana, face slashed from ear to ear. Six Asian women shot dead in Georgia. An 89-year-old woman set on fire. It feels like it's open season on us. Is freedom just a word? Asian Americans are...
are just as American as everyone else. This is sustained through my service in the U.S. military. Now, is this patriot enough? Am I